Hello, my name is Andy, and I am the Village Idiot, and I'm armed with a car and this very GoPro, and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. Welcome back to Bassett Law. Now, today I'm beginning this one on a drive. This is actually a footpath, but it's got trees either side of it. You might remember in the Clumber and Hardwick episode how we saw a road like this. Well, this is not far from Clumber and Hardwick. This path takes us towards the church in this village. This is the delightful place known as Holbeck. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Holbeck is an estate village built for the Dukes of Portland at Welbeck Abbey, lying close to the abbey itself on the western side of the A60 road in southern Bassetlaw. According to the 2001 census, it had a population of 449, reducing substantially to just 195 in 2011. Holbeck has two discernible areas, these being High Holbeck and Holbeck Woodhouse. Our trip begins in High Holbeck. The population also includes that of the adjoining parish of Welbeck. Holbeck should not be confused with another settlement of the same name in Leeds. Holbeck has a trail that starts by the side of the Holbeck farm barns and leads right into a picturesque limestone gorge which is close by. Stick around for a while, we'll see that later. The parish is part of the massive 15,000 acre country estate that surrounds Welbeck Abbey, which has been home to the Dukes of Portland and their families since 1607. It's classed as being part of Sherwood Forest too, despite the fact the area around Holbeck is much more open than the dense, thicker woodland we're used to seeing in places like Walesby. The land making up the modern estate originally formed part of a forest however, and it was controlled by Welbeck Abbey. Following the Reformation, portions were dispersed and Holbeck ended up as the property of Earl Manvers. In 1810, ownership was transferred to the Duke of Portland along with nearby Bonbusk, a small hamlet within Holbeck's boundaries, in exchange for Bill Hag Wood adjacent to Thorsby Park. Historically, the original hamlet of Holbeck is not recorded in the Doomsday Book, nor is there any documentary evidence for an early church or chapel. So one thing I didn't expect with Holbeck was for it to be effectively on top of a hill. I'm walking down a road here which will take us back towards where we began and it's quite steep actually. Like a little steep sided gorge here. This hill is deceivingly steep. It may not look like it on camera but I can promise you it was. The hillside though is good when you consider the views you get from the top. Holbeck Woodhouse is similar to High Holbeck in that it's really just a small cluster of houses. However, it played a key role in the secretive development of Catholicism in the area from around 1600. Robert Pierpont, the first Earl of Kingston-upon-Hull, lived at Holbeck Woodhouse Hall in the 1600s where a Catholic chapel was developed there. It became a hiding place for Catholic priests during the years of persecution. A local story tells of a boy named John Sherwood, a known Catholic, who died at Holbeck Woodhouse in 1633. He was buried at night in Cookney due to his faith. Let's have some demographics for Holbeck now. Bear in mind these also include the population figures for Welbeck. The parish has a population density of 30.36, pretty low as you might expect for such a rural area. At 98.5%, the ethnicity here is very much white British. Almost 60% of the residents are of working age. If you want a house out here, you'll be keen to know the average house price. There appears to be no accurate data, but you might be surprised to learn most of the recent sales are below £200,000. Holbeck has a few amenities despite being so small. There's a red phone box which is still in use as a phone box too. There's no book exchange or defib machine in this one. 
Here are the Holbeck Farm Barns, an exclusive group of holiday cottages steeped in history. They were originally used by Holbeck Hall Farm as barns. They gradually fell out of use, but they have now been carefully transformed and include some of their original period features. Brown's is also here too, a boutique bed and breakfast established 30 years ago, providing adult-only accommodation. They're proud holders of the only five-star gold award with Visit England in the north of Nottinghamshire. Let's not forget Holbeck has residents too, as well as holiday cottages. As such, there's a small playing field here to keep Holbeck's children entertained. Okay, if you watched the Norton and Cockney episode last week, you'll, re you'll remember how I thought there was an adventure trail in that little playground, and it turned out to be a climbing frame. Well, here in Holbeck, there's one here. Now, it's not very big. I might stand a chance with this one of getting to the end. It'll be the first time I've done it. I'm just going to put my glove back on, and we'll see. So we've got a stepping stone, a balance beam, another stepping stone, another balance beam, three stepping stones, and a rope swing in between the last two. This will be interesting. Uh, put my glove on. Right, okay, here we go. Ooh, okay, right, we're on. Hey, we're doing okay. How am I gonna get to the end? No, no, <laughs> lost my balance. <laughs> Holbeck Woodhouse would appear to have a village hall. This house certainly looked like one, but there were no signs outside, so I might have been mistaken with this. I am totally sure of the church though. The church can be found up a lovely tree-lined footpath connecting High Holbeck and Holbeck Woodhouse. Termed as a chapel, it was in fact a private chapel originally. This is St Winifred's, a Grade 2 listed building. It was built between 1913 and 1916 to the designs of a Mr McIntyre, approved with a few modifications by Louis Ambler for the 6th Duke of Portland. When I was in the churchyard, I thought it looked remarkably similar to the small chapel at nearby Steetley. I found out during editing it was indeed based on Steetley. It's in a joint parish with St Mary's Church in Cookney and Welbeck Abbey Chapel. St Winifred's was the traditional burial place of the Dukes of Portland and their families, most of whom are interred within this small churchyard. Those buried here include the 6th Duke of Portland, the 7th Duke of Portland, Ivy Cavendish Bentick, the Duchess of Portland, and the 9th Duke of Portland, at whose death the dukedom became extinct. Most of their predecessors are buried in London. The 1st Duke and the 2nd Duke are in Westminster Abbey, whilst the 3rd is in St Marlebone Parish Church, and the 5th is in Kensal Green Cemetery. In addition to the graves of the Dukes of Portland, St Winifred's Church also contains a memorial for Lady Ottoline Morrill, dating from 1939 on the North Isle Wall. It's a pretty impressive church, and even the stone gatehouse is worth a mention. This is one very well kept place of worship. Holbeck is on a bus route. The 209 we mentioned back in Cookney runs through here as well along the A60. So behind this bus stop, there's a little green. Oh, I don't think this is the proper way in. Oh, there's probably another entrance, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no reason why I can't just hop over there. Anyway, the reason I'm highlighting this is because I've noticed something in here. There's a plaque underneath this tree. This oak was planted by Holbeck and Welbeck Parish Council to celebrate the millennium, May 2000. Just before we finish the section off, we have to mention Welbeck Estate a little bit too. A lot of the western portion of the estate falls within Holbeck's boundaries, including a garden centre and the Harley Gallery. Here though is the entrance to the School of Artisan Food off the A60. Keep this entrance in mind, it will become important next week. So I've stopped to have five minutes here on this bench outside the church, donated by Holbeck and Welbeck Parish Council in 2008. And this gives me an opportunity to introduce you to another area of this parish, which we have talked about before, a long, long time ago. I did a series in Bolsover. If you've not seen the Bolsover series, all 16 parishes are up on the channel. One of those, number five in the series, is Elmton with Cresswell. And in that episode, I did make a reference to Cresswell Crags, which don't belong to that episode, they belong here in Holbeck. They're actually right on the border, but they're more 
Nottinghamshire than they are Derbyshire. Earlier this morning, I went to Cresswell Crags. Let's have a look at them. On the border between Nottinghamshire and Derbyshire, where Bassetlaw touches Bolsover and Holbeck touches Elmton with Cresswell, are the amazing Cresswell Crags. It's an enclosed limestone gorge. If you're not familiar with them, trust me, it really is a sight to behold. No wonder then there are signs telling visitors about the preservation of the crags. The cliffs in the ravine contain several caves that were occupied during the last ice age between around 43,000 and 100,000 years ago. Some contain the northernmost cave art in Europe. Fascinating historians and geologists alike for many years, the caves contain occupation layers with evidence of flint tools from many cultures. They were seasonally occupied by nomadic groups of people during the Upper Paleolithic and Mesolithic periods. There's evidence of Neanderthal occupation 50,000 to 60,000 years ago, a brief Gravettian occupation around 32,000 years ago, and use of all the main caves during the Magdalenian around 14,000 years ago. The site is open to the public and has a visitor centre with a small museum of objects associated with the caves, including a stuffed cave hyena. Some of the caves have names with stones on the ground to show us what they're called. This one is the arch. As a result of its unique features, Cresswell Crags has been designated as a site of special scientific interest. It's also been put forward as a potential World Heritage Site. In 2005 and 2006, the B6042 road was rerouted from its path through the gorge by approximately 150 metres to the north to minimise traffic impact on the site. In the centre of the gorge is the elongated Crags Pond. This in itself is pretty regardless of the crags around it. It's a popular water feature with the local wildlife. Moving through the gorge we come to Mother Grundy's parlour which has produced numerous flint tools and split bones and was occupied until Mesolithic times. If you walk all the way around the pond you can see all the crags in the gorge in less than half an hour. At the eastern end of the pond is where the cafe and visitor centre is located and there's a Canadian Airmen memorial close by too which I've covered in today's picture bit. I could have stood here for hours admiring the view through the gorge. This is a wonderful part of the country at literally any time of year. So as well as the crags themselves, we also have Crags Meadow, which is right here. Uh, it's not open at the moment. It's a bit early in the morning for it, but uh, <laughs> yeah, Crags Meadow. It's like a picnic area, I think. There's some definitely some picnic tables down there. You've got Crags Edge Cafe, which is just beyond there too. But I'm, to be honest with you, more interested in the crags and how amazing they look. Why have I never been here before? If you remember the Bolsover series, you'll recall Cresswell grew thanks to coal mining. Before Cresswell Village was built around the colliery in the late 19th century, there were only farms around the entrance to the crags. At that time, Cresswell Crags was known locally as Whitwell Crags or the Whitwell Gap. Because of this fact, the crags may be what was referred to by Anglo-Saxon poets. They recorded King Alfred's grandson, King Edmund, conquering the five boroughs from the Viking Earls in 942 AD, reaching as far as Dor in Sheffield and Huitan Wills Geet, which translates to the Whitwell Gap. The cave art here is worthy of its own video. The most famous piece found in the caves is known as the Ochre Horse, found in Robin Hood's cave. It's estimated to be between 11,000 and 13,000 years old. To this day, the finds at Cresswell Crags represent the most northerly finds in Europe. Their subject matter include representations of animals, including bison and arguably several different bird species. Church Hole is perhaps the most famous of all the caves, with more than 80 engravings on its walls, and it was occupied intermittently until Roman times. In all, the crags are a worthwhile visit, and trust me, there's loads more I could have told you about them. But they're a fabulous place to come and visit, so next time you have a day to yourselves, 
Come here and see what else you can discover. So that'll pretty much do us for Creswell Crags or Cresswell Crags. I always try to say Cresswell these days. It's just ingrained in me that I still say Creswell because it's how I always used to say it. But I uh, know different now. Um, time for a picture bit and here it comes right now. Just before we finish this one off, I need to show you something. I'm stood at one of the entrances to the Welbeck Estate. There it is. Now where that red car's going, that's a garden centre, there's a, an art gallery, some other various other bits and bobs. It may even tell us on this sign, if we just get a bit closer to it. So we've got a right, Harley Gallery, Harley Cafe, Farm Shop, Dukeries Garden Centre and Restaurant. Now, I need to make something clear at this point. A lot of this estate belongs to Holbeck Parish, but it's pointless putting it in this video because a little further down there is the boundary with Welbeck. And if I was to put this into the Holbeck video, Welbeck would virtually have nothing to show you. So you're going to have to wait for next week to see what's down there. But for now, this has been the Parish of Holbeck and I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out. Music